Welcome to a special Let the People Know here on SST TV. I'm glad to be here at the CVCO building. Again, it's been around since 1953. We're with the board president, and that is Tina Faldello, to let you know about the Cunningham Valley, what the CVCO stands for, what they're all about, some new things happening here, and it's an area that's booming with growth. So thanks for joining us and having me into the gym. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here on behalf and represent the CVCO. Um, like you said, we've been around since 1953. It was a bunch of citizens who wanted to just get together in the Cunningham community and um, do more for the community, more events and that sort of thing. So um, it originally started out as um, just community events and then Valley Day Festival. And then it just kind of grew, grew from there. Right. We'll get to the activities in just a minute, um, but if you can tell us about the participation of the community within the CBCO. You work with the Cunningham Borough, but you're not part of the Cunningham Borough. Correct. Yeah, I think it's like a, a common uh, mistake that people mm -hmm. think that we um, are affiliated with the Park and Recreation Board with the Cunningham Borough, but we're not. We're totally separate completely nonprofit. Um, all of our revenue will come from either donations or participation in our programming. Um, so at, that being said, we do work with the Cunningham Borough. We, we work very closely. Our, we held a lot of our events on their, on, at the Whispering Willows Park and also at um, the Borough Building. Um, and we let them use the gym and, and that sort of things. But, but we are completely separate. We are um, a nonprofit um, totally privately run by volunteers on the board. Um, so, yeah. So yeah. the CVCO stands for Cunningham Valley Civic Organization. Correct. There are many activities that maybe the public does not know that this nonprofit is in charge of, which has not only from Cunningham, but the surrounding area benefits from the activities that are put on here by the CVCO. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, I think a lot of people think that either to join our organization or to join our pool or participate in our programming, they have to be from Cunningham, and it's not true at all. Uh, we really service the entire greater Hazleton area. We have members from, from Hazleton, we have members from Mountaintop, um, Sugarloaf, Drums, you know, all, all over, mm -hmm. really. Um, so you don't have to be from the Cunningham Valley to kind of participate in everything that we that we provide. Walk us through the, the activities that you have year round, that are your annuals. Sure, we have two um, facilities. We have the, the CVCO pool mm -hmm. and then the gym, of course, this is where, where we're located right now. Um, and our big, big programming that we have is running the pool in the summer and then also our Shooting Stars Basketball League, which takes place here. And we've grown so much that we also um, rent the Butler Gym. So those are our two very big uh, programs, Shooting Stars in the Pool. But we also do community events, um, and they're free to the community. We do a Halloween parade. We do an Easter egg hunt every year. We got in touch with Santa, and we do letters to Santa in, in conjunction with Christmas in Cunningham. Uh, we also help with a Memorial Day parade. So we kind of try to do something throughout the, the entire year. Right, and uh, hundreds and thousands of people participate and benefit from what you do um, as a CVCO. Now, when it comes to being a nonprofit, of course, and running things like this, we need funding, we need money. Um, there's that misconception out there that, oh, CVCO's handled, they, they have money, they're in the valley, they're fine. Um, that isn't the case. Not dreadful dying over here. Right. <laughs> simply, we need funding to produce all of these events because everyone is a volunteer right that is on the board and that makes this happen yeah and uh you know not only are they volunteers um but really in the last 10 20 years our facilities haven't been updated 
So uh, right now, one of our strategic goals for our board is to um, upgrade some of our facilities. For example, we just recently had the inside of this gym painted. Mm -hmm. um, this gym was built in 1999 and hasn't been painted since. So we're on 20 years of, of hard use and basketball dings and balloons on the ceiling from birthday parties yeah. and that sort of thing. And at like your own house, you, after 20 years, you look at things like the roof that might need to re be replaced or certainly no air conditioning here, but yeah. the painting <laughs> and the lighting yeah. and it's just uh, paying the utility bills and all that. Absolutely. Fun and the air conditioning is on the docket for, uh, for 2023, hopefully. Um, and then at the pool, I mean, if anybody owns a pool, they know how expensive it is to uh, maintain a pool. Um, we had a major renovation back in 99. It was a big year for the CVCO at the pool, and uh, we haven't had our, our filtration re system replaced since. Um, so really it's at its end of its useful life, but you can imagine when you're replacing a filtration system for a public pool, pool it's very expensive. So that is going to, we are going to be replacing that in the fall. Um, so you know, we really count on donations um, from people, businesses, um, that sort of thing, uh, to help us pay for this. We also um, replaced the roof of our pool house. Mm -hmm. The pool house was built in 1982, so do the quick math there. The roof was very old, so we did that um, last year. And we have a, a lot of projects that we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. um, that would not only um, help aesthetically, but also help us serve the community. Okay, so there's lots going on with the CBCO. If uh, you find that you can donate, please donate. They have a Facebook page, you have a website. Correct, yeah. Um, easy to you know, write out a check to the CBCO. Maybe if you wanna put in the memo what it's for. Absolutely. You can do that too. Um, when we come back, uh, Tina, we'll have you back on the program later, but we're gonna have two of the board members on to talk specifically about their roles um, with the CBCO and how it is helping the community. You're watching Let the People Know right here on SSP TV. We'll be right back. And we're back here, Let the People Know, focusing our attention on the CBCO. Cunningham Valley Civic Organization, and we are speaking with Sherry Homenko, who is the board VP, and also Amy Cartwright, the board secretary. No stranger to um, the community. You guys do a lot of volunteering throughout the community, so thank you for that, first of all. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. So tell us about some of the events uh, that people should know about, because the CBCO does a lot of events, not only in the summer, but throughout the entire year. Yes, we're not just the building and the pool, so we offer a lot of different opportunities for the community to get involved and to have a great time in our community. Um, you know, we live here, so we want this community to have these types of opportunities and, and be a great place to be. So, um, you know, we offer um, parties here in the gym if patient, people want to have birthday parties, also at the pool. Um, in the winter months, we have Shooting Stars, which is a youth basketball league very well attended. Um, for Valley Day in the summer, which is in a few weeks, we do entertainment, we have firemen's parade, we have our Valley Day race, which is a 5K and eight mile race throughout the Cunningham Valley. Again, well attended, but it's always great to come out and you know walk or run Main Street and, and the Cunningham Valley. We, all of our money, all of our proceeds for that race um, go to the Valley Food Pantry and to CBCO. Right, and then uh, Sherry, I know you uh, participate in a lot of these events. Well, at Valley Day, we also have the Baby Parade and the Pet Parade, which are you know big hits in the community and the Carnival Games and the food, of course. Uh, we also have our annual Easter egg hunt, which is a big hit in the community. And at that, we do a canned food drive and people also give donations towards the CBCO, which is great. We also have our annual Halloween parade with the costume contest, which is fun. And, uh, you know, we are also in the process of forming a junior board to have more residents from within the Hazleton area become involved with the CVCO and help them make more of an impact and find out what it takes to run a community gym and a community pool. And it's nice because here as the, as the community grows, 
all of these different entities are coming together to help each other. Cunningham Borough, the CVCO, um, the local businesses along Main Street. I always said, I wish we could widen Main Street for how much traffic and population we now have in the Valley. And it's exciting to see the growth. I know Amy and we've lived in the Valley our entire lives. So to see the growth is like very nice to see and to see how many people are coming out and participating, not only from Cunningham, but the entire area. It's right. really bringing people together. Yeah, of course we serve the entire Hazleton area. Um, you know, it, it's great that local businesses support us in a lot of different ways through like sponsorship, mm -hmm. um, as well as through the race and, and other events that we do hold. So it, it's, it's very generous and, you know, warms our heart that that can continue to happen. Yeah, and then recently we added Christmas in Cunningham into the, to the mix, which was helpful for the volunteers for that, Lori Lasant and Sherry. Um, and uh, that turned out really nice that we were partnering with the CBCO and also giving money back um, to the organization. And I think that also further spreads the message that the CVCO, yes, it's located in Cunningham, but it's for the benefit of everybody in the greater Hazleton area. Sure. You don't need to live in Drums or Cunningham or Sugarloaf to join and be part of the CVCO. I personally grew up in Hazel Township and it, you know, I took advantage of some of the offerings of the CVCO growing up. Also, I mean, how nice is it that we get to have our children volunteer and be a part of their community and also stay out of trouble by volunteering and doing the sports down here and being active down here and getting their first jobs down here. Sure, sure. Again, using the pool and, and utilizing um, swim lessons of all ages, I think that that's very important because of the, the lack of swimming pools in the area and you know what that that does um, you know it's important it's a gr very important skill to learn um, you know so we do offer swim lessons all summer as well and as Amy had said to piggyback on that we used to have kids that were growing up learning how to swim at the YMCA or getting mm -hmm. swim lessons in school uh, you know whether it was at Valley or Heights Terrace or one of the others but unfortunately now some kids the first opportunity they're getting to learn how to swim is in ninth grade right and that's a little late to be learning a life skill like swimming. And um, we're gonna talk in depth about the pool coming up in our next segment. But as far as uh, when the growth is coming for all of these activities that you have, what is it that you need from the community for these volunteers, donations? What do we need? Everything? All of the above. <laughs> like you said, you know, it. donations are always welcome of any kind. Yes. Um, and that could also be in the form of volunteering your time. There's a lot of things that we do that, that we need people's hands on, on deck. Um, and just showing up, you know, continuing to support that. I think the more it grows, again, the better off it's going to be just in general. I think another important part to get across is with Valley Day, the funds that are raised from Valley Day are used to offset the costs of the CVCO pool. Every year we open up the pool, we actually run on a deficit and we lose money from the pool. And we really don't want to raise the prices of the pool because we don't want to make it unaffordable to the community around us. So any sponsorships that you can give to us at the CVCO are greatly appreciated and they go back to the kids, they go back to the community, and it goes back to the one gemstone of a pool that's left in the Hazleton area. Sure. Isn't that the truth? If you think about it, the only really place to get a swimming lesson now, which they're all, they're all filled, are, is the CVCO sure. pool. Definitely. Yeah, refreshing in there too on these hot days. I know, I, we'll have to dive into the pool after the show because we're not AC in here. <laughs> not yet, but uh, Tina said that's coming next year. Um, but when we come back, guys, thanks for joining Thank us you. and for everything that you do, uh, not only for the CVCO, but volunteering throughout the entire um, community. So when we come back, Tina's back with us. She's the board president. We're going to talk about the pool and the importance of the pool, uh, renovations that need to be done at the pool and how you can help. So stay with us here on Let the People Know. We're back here, Let the People Know on SSP TV. We're happy to be here with the CVCO, place I grew up here in the Cunningham Valley. Glad to be a part of it this year and to learn about everything that the organization offers, not only Cunningham, but the entire area. We thank all of the sponsors from outside of Cunningham that have made uh, some of these events possible. Nonprofit, strictly on donations, right? So Tina's back with us, 
The poll's a huge entity, not the only thing we heard about the activities, but it's a huge entity um, that has grown over the years, but it's, it's expensive to run. Yes, it is. And like uh, Sherry mentioned in uh, the previous segment, uh, we usually operate at a deficit for yeah. the pool. And I don't think a lot of people know that, you know? I mean, why would you? And when you, when you look at it on the surface, it looks beautiful. Um, there's always a lot of people there. Um, but, but running a pool between the chemicals and the labor and the maintenance, um, it's very expensive. But I think one of the things, and one of the reasons why I, I really enjoy being president of the board is because of the group of people that are on the board. And everyone knows how much the pool means to our community. Um, you know, we've all been around and all these pools are closing. Mount Laurel closed, um, the Ruck Glen pool closed, the Y closed, which was huge, huge. So I think every person on our board feels that it's their responsibility to keep this pool open and keep this pool running so we can offer swim lessons for the community and just like a place to have fun yeah. in the summer, really. Yeah, my memories were at the pool. I remember growing up the pool opened at 12, yeah. we were there 12 to 8, then we'd hop right over to the baseball field and then we would ride our bikes home at night. So, I mean, we were, we were always outside and involved with the pool and the activities around the pool that happened. And not to mention you meet a lot of uh, nice people and you're in a safe environment. Um, so, tell us about the pool um, in specifics. Tell us about how the pool's grown, what kind of funding it gets uh, from the community. Sure. We. Um you know, over the last, once the pandemic hit, you know, it was kind of like a, um, a, a, a defining moment for the CVCO. We could have gone, we, we could have gone in one of two directions, either really grow or like take time, because uh, everybody had more time during the pandemic. So we, we, we kind of took a step back and said, all right, we want to continue this board. We want to continue with the pool open. Um, so what, what can we do to, to make us more successful and offer more programming for the community? So um, we, we couldn't do much because of the pandemic, but fast forward to 2021 and last year, we started implementing more swimming lessons. Um, we do a float night on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. until close. You could bring a float and float in the pool. Um, we also do a craft every Sunday, which is free to anyone who shows up, so you don't have to be a member. Um, we started offering day passes, uh, and that's something that's very um, important uh, to the board to continue to offer day passes um, because we understand that we're the only pool in the area that does that. Um, you know, and sometimes families don't can't go all summer, but a day or two here and there, you know, you could pop down to the pool and just cool off. Uh, we also do pool parties. Um, we try to do a pool party once a month. Now that's for our members only, so it's kind of a benefit of being the members. We're also trying to expand uh, programming to, our, to all ages. So we started a water aerobics class in the morning. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of things that we're, we're starting to do, we're trying to do. You know, we're always looking for um, ways to improve and make it better. Uh, and you don't get uh, like other pools, maybe in the in the immediate area. There's no funding that comes in um, from other places other than the donations. Correct. Yeah. You know, I, I think we get compared to a lot of other community pools, particularly with our membership rates. And um, you know, we don't receive any subsidy from from the government. You know, we don't get any um, local or federal funding. It's not like the taxpayers are paying for the pool. Uh, it is completely based on uh, memberships um, and, our, and our fundraising efforts, particularly Valley Day, which we are entering the 69th year of Valley Day. I think we missed a year because of the pandemic, but um, for 69 years, that fundraiser has been keeping us going. I mean, it's, it's wild. It's huge, and yeah. that's a Valley Day and Valley Night. It used to just be Valley Day, but now it's Valley Day and Valley Night, always the first weekend of August. Yes. And I know that because my brother and I have a birthday then, so I'm, oh. we, we always went to Valley Day. We were excited yes. growing up. Um, so it's a party and it's, it's a lot of fun meeting people that you haven't seen in a while, especially after COVID. 
Uh, for those who are interested in learning about the memberships, what kind of memberships do you offer? We know about the day passes, but what kind of actual membership? Yeah, I think the, the other thing that's really important for people to know is that uh, once you get a pool membership, that is actually a year membership to the CVCO, and you get discounts okay. at several of our, all of our programming. So if you were to rent the pool for a pool party, for a birthday party, you get a discount on that rental. You would get a discount on renting the gym if you wanted to do an event or do a, a party here. Uh, you get a discount on uh, the exercise classes that are offered at the pool you get a discount on a shooting stars registration. Okay. So uh, we kind of recognize that that pool membership was limited to only three months. Mm -hmm. And for the price, uh, we wanted to incorporate year round programming and ways that you would benefit from becoming a member. This kind of pays for itself. Absolutely. If you have yeah. a lot of kids and you have activities throughout the entire year, it's a good way of looking at it. So memberships, you have senior memberships, you have we do family memberships. family memberships and this year we did something a little different because uh, families are so mixed this year not everyone lives in the same household so we just did it by the number of people in your family okay. which i think is working out really well we have a lot of seniors who get a two-person membership because they bring their grandkids to the oh. pool um, you know or a three-person membership if they have more grandkids we also just have a basic general membership and, and that's about $20. It gets you a membership for the whole year. It gets you a discount to um, most of our winter programming, shooting stars, and a discount to uh, rentals here at the gym. Awesome. So again, um, the CVCO does a lot, not only for Cunningham, but for the entire area. They aren't super rich, so we do need funding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the call to action is if you can afford um, a donation of how small or how big, whether it's monetary or a donation of time, a time yeah. or a tricky uh, tray basket, gift basket, that would be amazing. You could get in touch with Tina. Um, you have the Facebook page and the website. Website and uh, email, uh, cvcoinfo at gmail.com. Yep. Very good. Well, thanks for joining us here on the show. Thank you so much. We're going to get out of the heat now, but we thank okay. you for joining us here. Hopefully in 2023, we'll be sitting here on air in some air conditioning, yes, right? Hopefully. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on Let the People Know. Thank you.